It is always a fantastic experience to watch 3D in a cinema theatre. You feel like things are flying right at you. And the characters, they're so close that you can almost touch them. <laughs> wow. 3D indeed is a magical experience. And now, I purchased these 3D glasses and I can have this magical experience at home as well. Something is wrong with them. They don't seem to work. Hmm. To figure out what's wrong, let's actually see how 3D glasses work. But before that, let's do a trick using our eyes. Hold your finger in front of your face like this. Now look at it with only one eye at a time. Okay, dude, stop moving around. <laughs> My finger looked as though it was hopping from side to side. Did you experience that as well? Isn't it interesting that each of my eyes see the same finger, but at different positions? Now, similarly, when I look at this stack of books, I don't just see a stack. I'm actually seeing two different versions at the same time, with slightly different positions with each of my eyes. My brain is putting them together. These two versions are sort of mixing and that's how I see a 3D stack of books. Now it is only when the two images come together from both my eyes do I get a sense of the position of the books, how far away they are exactly placed from me. Now you see, the things that we see around us, from books to nature, we actually see in 3D. They don't appear to us as though they are drawn on paper, right? We're also able to tell how close they are or how far they are. This only happens because of our two eyes. Having two eyes side by side helps our brain uh, three-dimensional vision, right? It can see things not just in 2D. The ability of our eyes and brains to see things in 3D, know their correct positions and figure out how far they are from us is called depth perception. It's actually depth perception that prevents us from constantly colliding against a wall or a tree or even other people. But what does this have to do with 3D glasses? Let me explain. Our 3D technology plays around with the science of eyesight to make things pop out of our screens. This is done by showing two slightly different images of the same thing to each eye. The left eye sees one distinct image and the right eye sees another. Our brain, as always, gets two different images and puts them together. But it does not know that each eye is looking at different images. So it gets tricked into forming a single 3D image. And as a result, this pops out of the screen. Similar to how we were looking at the 3D stack of books. Now, look at these red and blue images. Well, nothing spectacular, right? It just looks noisy. But if you look at them with these glasses on, oh, <sighs> the statue was popping out. This happens because the red film in my glasses allows only my left eye to see the blue parts of the image. And the blue film allows my right eye to see only the red parts of the film. Yes, blue gets blocked and red gets blocked by each of these lenses. And my brain produces an amazing 3D image. The world has moved on and today we have polarized 3D glasses. Hey, have you ever taken off your 3D glasses while watching a 3D movie at a cinema? If not, try doing that the next time. Your favorite characters will be weird, blurry and distorted. But as soon as you put your glasses back on, they'd pop right at you. How is that possible? 
heartfelt 3D movies nowadays use an interesting property of waves called polarization. Light is a wave, or at least it behaves like that sometimes. Generally, the light around us, like the one coming from the sun, or a lamp, or a candle flame, is unpolarized or non-polarized. This means that the light waves are vibrating in many different directions. Now, if we make the light waves move in one specific direction, we get polarized light, not move, but sort of oscillate in one particular direction. Now, let me simplify this for you with the help of a friend of mine and a rope. Now, you see here, we are each holding onto a rope. Look at this circular half hazard motion. Think of light moving this way. Now, see what happens when we place two objects close enough to form a vertical slit. That's right. Now, the half hazard motion is not continuing beyond the slit. And check this out. If I were to move the rope or oscillate the rope in the horizontal direction, nothing moves over to my friend. But if I move the rope or oscillate the rope in the vertical direction, that wave reaches across to my friend. Now, can you imagine what would happen if the slit were not vertical but were horizontal? That's right. Only the waves which are horizontal which would move across. The vertical waves would get blocked and only a little bit of the half hazard circular waves would actually pass through. Now, similarly, light waves can also have filters that allow only certain types of polarized light to pass through them. Now, in a theater, cinema, a projector is used to project a movie onto large screens. In order to show 3D movies, the movie theaters project two versions of the same movie on the screen. The movie reaches our eyes as light waves. Now, the two versions of the movie are polarized in different ways. And the 3D glasses have two different glasses, right? Two different filters. Each filter that allows only one version of the movie to be seen by either eye. And as you can guess, we end up seeing the movie in 3D. Quick question. What do you think would happen if we close one eye while wearing the 3D glasses? I'm sure you've tried this. Will we still be able to see the movie or watch the movie in 3D? Well, no, because both our eyes work together to make that possible. So it's not just the glasses that help in watching 3D. It's what happens with our eyes and what happens on the screen. Unless two versions of whatever we are seeing, the movie, polarized in different directions, are projected into each one of our eyes differently, we won't be able to see the movie in 3D. 3D technology has come a long way. It's not just red and blue, it's not just polarized light. Many more types of 3D glasses have been invented. The latest kind, if I'm not wrong, has some kind of automated shutters on each lens. When we watch something with these glasses, the shutters work alternatively, in sync with whatever's happening on the screen. Now, as the shutters alternate, the glasses become opaque alternatively, allowing only one eye to see at a time. However, the shutters are alternating very, very, very rapidly, about 120 times per minute. As a result, the two images merge and are perceived as a single 3D image. These glasses are called active shutter. 3D glasses. Now, oh, it's true, regardless of how advanced the 3D technology gets, we cannot deny that it's only possible because of how our eyes and our brain functions. It's all on us. <laughs> if you want to know more about how spectacular the human eye is or how fascinating light is, you know what to do. Head over to Byju's The Learning App. Until next time.